Startups are not good enough. Other ideas like really shit. Just like crypto winter, we have in this investment world what we are terming the funding winter. You have to always put yourself into the shoes of an investor because the failure point of that business is. You will know that it's I don't know. Enough. It's instinct yeah. already. We had a term when we were evaluating, you know, called uh, delusional entrepreneurs, mm. right? Why is it so hard for Malaysian startups to raise money? Is it purely because the startups are not good enough? Are the ideas like really shit? Or <laughs> the investors are all bullshit and they don't have money? Because, I mean, we always read on the news, right? Yeah. 500 million fund announced here, 50 million fund announced there. But then when you go out and speak to startups, uh, nobody's getting the money. I mean, that's what yeah. you keep hearing. Of course, some of the bigger startups do get funded because, you know, they're at the point where they're so big, they keep getting more money to grow. What do you think? There's a few things here. First thing I'm going to highlight is the fact that just like crypto winter, we have in this investment world what we are terming the funding winter. For Malaysia alone or no, is this globally. a global thing? It's a global thing. Okay. It's a funding winter. For 2023. And it will continue into 2024 as well to a certain extent. That's on the macro level. The second part is kind of what you said, the ideas are not good enough. And that's very, very obvious as well. You have to always put yourself into the shoes of an investor because it's their money. If it's not the rakyat's money, if it's not the public money, it's somebody's money. Yeah. You have to manage that money well and you have to make that money grow. If you put that yourself in an investor's shoe, investors are seeing deal flows all the time. Mm. They're seeing proposals, business plans, pitch decks all the damn time. And, and somebody like me, I've looked at more than 2,500 businesses. Somebody could do a 30 second elevator pitch to me and I could immediately tell you where the failure point of that business is. You'll know whether it's I don't know, enough. it's yeah. instinct mm. already. It's trained, right? Entrepreneurs will see their point of view because it's back down to rule of bias. Their bias will be, my idea is great. Oh yeah, I mean I've been listening to entrepreneurs like yeah. that for the last 10 years exactly. uh, who will come and pitch to me at any of the startup events or my networking yeah. events. You know, obviously you know, everyone thinks like what they're doing is the There's most unique thing and they're the first in Malaysia or yeah. the world to do it. And then the moment they open their mouth and mention what they're doing, yeah. immediately on the spot, right? I can point to them, hey, yeah. the other two guys here, they're yeah. doing the same thing that you're doing. We had a term when we were evaluating, you know, called uh, delusional entrepreneurs, mm. right? Many of them out there, I can attest to that. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, we had to have that code word to end certain mm. conversations, certain interviews and, you know, with entrepreneurs and stuff like that. I think Maxim Baddy now, you know, created a term, delulu. Uh, did he create delulu? Yeah, he kind of ah, made okay. it, well, made it viral. Like and I'm gonna, I'm gonna remix it and call it delulu melon out there mm. uh, t-shirt coming out soon mm. Dilulu Melons there's no way to win the argument you'll never win against mm. them because uh, the bias is hard, such yeah. yeah the third factor that's also happening is product market fit and this is where a lot of startups fail in the Malaysian context I would give item three the more emphasis because here's a good tip to a lot of founders and entrepreneurs out there we as a country we are no longer 40 plus percent malay 40 plus percent chinese and you know indians and one malaysia makeup no it's already at a point where you're 70 percent boomy mm, yeah and but it's been like that for no. a while now right that number is going to change within the next 10 15 years because i call it the horniness growth index i don't know whether i'm allowed to say that whether you want to censor it population growth rate is growing it, it's youtube we don't have to censor yeah it. well i mean population growth rate is going between 0 0.5 to 1 percent it doesn't take a mad genius to figure that out it will be the next 10 to 15 years before you reach the 80%. The Chinese is shrinking. We have more Bangla Bangladeshis here in the country than, than Malaysian Chinese at one point pre-COVID. the migration index have probably increased, so. <laughs> you have national food security issue mm. because you're basing it on a population number of 32.8 million or something to that effect. Mm. When the actual number of people in the country is closer to 50 million. And that's why you don't have enough chickens and eggs to go around. So how many undocumented people do we have? Go really? figure. I mean, there were 6.5 million Bangladeshis in the country yeah. pre-COVID. More than Indians now, right? Way more. I think so, yeah. They, they overtook Chinese, mm. Malaysians. The Indians are be slowly becoming extinct, weirdly enough. They're less than great. 5% We're doing of the a population. great job with the border, guys. Like I said, I mean, even the Indians yeah, are... border is the worst. Anybody can no, just walk in. I mean, <laughs> you walk into a mall and you see a Malay family with like five, six kids. They're prosperous. Where's this money coming from, right? And so you start to go down this rabbit hole, which is what I discovered and why Sukacell is going to exist. The startup businesses out there in terms of product market fit, whenever they do their slide on 10 Samsung and all that stuff, serviceable, obtainable market 
Numbers are always wrong. Projections always wrong. Inflated. Mm-hmm. Who they are trying to sell to is that minority, less than 20% urban market, and the that Moncara and the Bangsa residents. Yeah, and that effectively, you know, if if you apply the 80-20 rule to your population statistics, that effectively means at best six plus million people. You minus the old and the young. Mm. You're left with about three to four million people as customers. If you look at the startup ecosystem, right, mm. many of the projects or even the founders, they are highly inspired by Silicon Valley. Obviously, yeah. they are tuned into the you know the the foreign ecosystem, not our local ecosystem. They don't know the market here. They tune into the Dropbox and the Tinders and the Facebooks. Yeah. And when they build something, they're building something along that line. I'm all for companies that are pushing technology forward, benefiting people who use that technology and helping other people's lives with those technologies. And I welcome it. But as a company, as a business, there's two sides here. There's innovation and there's the business viability of it. Malaysia as a market is not the right market for you to launch this kind of products because you're going to struggle to monetize mm. and convert and acquire those customers. And you're selling to a market that doesn't have the right product market fit because the majority of Malaysians out there don't give a damn about these innovations. Mm.